Hi everyone in cloud computing and welcome to episode 65 of the C-Suite Show, featured on YouTube and podcast with Brad Nelson and internationally recognised and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Limpicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show we're talking about that the world's biggest car maker Volkswagen has said it will be using cloud computing and the Internet of Things technologies from Amazon Web Services to connect and manage its manufacturing plants and supply chain. Hi Dave, it's great to see you on another C-Suite show this week. Welcome. Yeah, it's great to be back and this is a great story. I um, love following the car industry and their use of cloud. Yeah, absolutely. It really is very interesting what's going on. So, look, should other companies sort of go to the VW AWS route for their cloud and IoT then? Oh, of course. It, it's a little odd that they're kind of announcing uh, the deal going on, but I was, I'm, I'm assuming this happens a, a lot in uh, in companies because they, they get a discount. And uh, so they're looking to get, um, you know, so much Amazon in production and chances are it's a huge deal for AWS and a huge deal for for VW. The reality is, is I think the car makers are slow in, in, in the uptake of technology and whether it's using cloud computing or even building the technology in the cars. The only reason and I, we've seen just a huge uptake um, and a sh huge um, you know, presence and in interest in technology in the last five to 10 years is because of, you know, car companies like Tesla Motors and, you know, they got, there's dozens of, um, you know, new startups that are popping up that are really kind of, you know, weaponizing technology for people who are, you know, driving cars and the ability to do some amazing things with some, with a very old piece of technology is what a car is, is uh, something I think that the car manufacturers are finally embracing. And, and it's actually, it it's, uh, takes me back that, you know, a lot of these existing, you know, big car manufacturers, um, not picking on VW, this is all of them, uh, don't have a good presence in the cloud. And they don't have automated services. They're not leveraging IoT as much as they should. They do have some things that they can point to with some of the automated factories and some of the utilization of robots and things like that. But, you know, it's it's not, doesn't rise to the level of the sophistication of something like Tesla Motors or other, some of the new car manufacturers that are able to, in essence, um, you know, go from CAD to production, you know, in a matter of months where, you know, it takes two years to get a new model out or even, you know, a new line of cars that are built, you know, within these organizations. And GM and uh, Ford, you know, they're not doing real well on selling cars. They're doing okay on selling trucks. And so they're out of that business now. Um, GM, I'm sorry, Ford is not GM, um, but they're going to have to catch up. And so they're going to have to be out, innovate, the uh, other car manufacturers all over the world. And so the bigger they are, I think the more they need to innovate. And I truly think that they're, we're going to go through this thing called a brand apocalypse where we're just going to see a lot of these brands going away um, because the smaller companies, even that have less money and less time on the planet, and but they're, gonna, they're run by innovators and they're you know run by um, folks who are able to disrupt markets you know, leveraging technology is something that's able to take them to the next level. Um, I always use Tesla as a as a uh, as a reference point, but the reality is is that we're going to build cars in the future where it's going to be bits and pieces of different technology. You know, the best uh, self driving capabilities will come from a single you know design in a single company. It'll be replicated in all the cars that use self driving technology, safety technology, um, the ability to have transmission systems that are electronically controlled and computerized in terms of their ability to shift and be much more effective and efficient. Uh, the ability to control the battery, um, um, you know, battery battery burn, the best way to say it, however, the consum battery consumption, where you're able to get, you know, a thousand miles on a single charge. And all that technology is coming. However, it kind of scares me to death that a lot of the big companies out there who I like, I like those brand name companies, you know, just aren't moving fast enough to, to catch up to the market. And if the market starts showing up with those sort of capabilities, um, people are going to vote with their dollars and go uh, go buy another car. And so it's going to be, and by the way, now with uh, our ability to build in remote factories, we can scale, you know, we can we can tool up very quickly and get the cars into production. They'll have first rate quality. Everybody has good quality stuff right now. Shipping and logistics is, is really kind of a repeatable pattern. So we're at a, the cusp of not only the automobile industry, but other industries as well, where if they're not bracing technology, if they're just getting into it now, 
um, then they're going to be facing a real uphill battle. Yeah, absolutely. It was only recently, actually, that Australia stopped producing cars. Uh, so they closed down both their Ford and their Holden factory. I think Holden is uh, uh, the equivalent, the Australian equivalent of General Motors, or, or Vauxhall for the UK and, and Opal for Europe or something. Uh, but essentially, yeah, closed down both the Holden factory and the Ford factory in uh, in Australia. So, um, yeah, pretty sad times for those iconic brands in Australia. And I think, like you say, it comes back down to that. It's the cost and the, the, the tooling, the automation, the technologies of just not... Have just not caught up, been caught up quick enough. They've, they've basically not been uh, updated quick enough, and, and they've become so out of date that the the money to actually improve and produce and manufacture has cost just too much uh, for the return they're getting and the volume of sales. Because, like you say, the consumers going with their you know their, the power of their dollar and going with the vehicles that are more in tune to what they now expect with a car, the technology, the interconnectedness of the technology, the super efficiency, the you know, excellent safety and, and kind of just uh, that sort of tech savvy, intuitive brand that a car manufacturer needs to be now, right? <laughs> yeah, and it's also affecting, uh, the other thing that's affecting sales is the um, is the side automation stuff, the ability to have Lyft and Uber. Um, so we don't even need a car anymore. And I know a lot of young people who own cars. They just consider them a big expense and and they just they'll Uber everywhere, and their Uber bills a hundred dollars a month, and they don't have a five hundred dollar a month car payment. It's insurance and tires and maintenance and things like that, and it's somebody else's problem. Um, to me, my generation, that would make us sad because you love cars, but I can understand why you want to make that l less of an issue. But other services that are coming up where people can have car share programs where you actually uh, are able to rent your car out when you're not using it. It's almost like Airbnb for an automobile. I thought that was an interesting model, and those are starting to pop up. And just to a point where, um, you know, they may not be as necess necessary as they were, you know, even five, six years ago. And it's going to affect the market. So you're going to have to think about, you know, things coming forward. You know, it was a business problem. I worked with a class one time in terms of, you know, what to tell the large automobile manufacturers in terms of all these changing mobility and uh, the connected cars and things like that and the new models that are popping up. I think the reality is there's going to be less cars per per, per person uh, in the next 10 years because a lot of people are just going to choose not to own them, and therefore the demand's going to go down. We're still going to have vehicles around, um, but we're not going to have as much vehicle ownership as we had. So what does the market do when that occurs? If everybody doesn't need a car, um, you know, and their markets, even though the population is growing, their market's going to actually shrink. You know, what, where do they jump to? And I think that's going to be an interesting problem going forward. And there's no easy answers, by the way. No, no, there really isn't. There really isn't. Uh, and we are seeing that. We're, we're seeing it before our eyes. And I think it's something that is a uh, markets, like you said, are the, the, grand, the brand apocalypse. They're happening a lot quicker than they ever have before because of the, the rate of technology, the rate of cloud, the rate of going to market, the expectation of the consumer, the knowledge that the consumer can obtain from online where they just didn't have the access before. It was kind of, you know, you were given that, you accepted it as a consumer as being the, the only thing out there that, that was, there were no alternatives. So I, I think the brand apocalypse, as you say, is, is something that's happening all the time, not only within organizations with the lack of insight and, and developing the brand from within that's, you know, going to meet the expectations of the customer tomorrow. But, but equally, from a customer's point of view, or you know, looking at the retail market, you only have to look at the high street. You know, the high street it, all around the world. There's similarities of shops up for let that you know, a big brands move to a you know a different location because they just can't afford um, to keep up the rents. The basic thing, like you know, having a retail a retail unit on a busy high street, just isn't paying its way anymore with the the way the online market's gone. Yeah, and I think the, the common thread is people are leveraging technology, cloud computing being the main driver uh, as the way to get into a shared shared economy, you know, where we're getting just more efficient at where we live and what we drive and how we're transported around. And I think it's a good thing because we'll have, you know, less of an impact on the on the the, um, um, the pollution and carbon, you know, carbon release into the, the app that. Uh, however, it's not going to be a good thing for, you know, these brands that we've had over household brands for the last 100, sometimes 200 years. And we're going to see just a lot of them fall by the wayside. We haven't seen the, the, the acceleration in that. We've seen little bits and pieces of it where, 
you know, some brands just go away and people, you know, make a make a note of it and don't really. But we're going to see a lot of brands in a very short period of time go away at the same time when the economies and all the in uh, economies around the world are booming just because they're leveraging in technology in a very positive way. We're going to be more efficient in doing this, but we're going to have to do so at the expense of some of these folks because they're unable to adopt cloud computing, leverage AI, which I guess we're circling back to the topic, but leverage artificial intelligence and big data systems, predictive analytics, IoT based systems, you know, robotics to, you know, go off and take their business to the next level. And, and so waited too long and ultimately someone just came along and changed the world for them. And I think that's uh, that's going to be a shame. Um, maybe people can call it natural selection, um, but I think it's preventable. I think the company is doing what VW can do is go, you know, go out and, you know, follow their lead, you know, and start building some major investments in cloud computing and getting some technology online that truly makes a change. It's not just a, a beta system or some kind of an IoT system. You have a few little things within the uh, within the factory you can point to and show us, show, show us their IoT. Um, but it's something that's a systemic change they can build a business around. And I don't think a lot of them have that right now. No, hundred percent. I agree with you. And look, uh, it would be nice if we um, if we had your top three tips for this week, Dave. Would be good enough. Sure. Um, you know, watch. You know, watch doing what others are doing, and so you don't have to follow everybody at the same pace. And I think people have a tendency to be more conservative because they view their competitors as being conservative, or really kind of their um, close followers or their partners in this case that are, are being less users of technology and i get that a lot where i'll recommend something you know that they make some significant moves to the cloud or other technologies because ultimately they have people disrupting the market now and that's going to continue and they point to other people that are in essence not leveraging technology and so that should never be the case you have to basically look at um, what you're doing with the needs of your businesses and then follow that course without looking outside of it at other other businesses because they're different or they could be dead, you know, in two years as well. You don't got to follow them into the graveyard. Understand the core benefits to the business and you have to be able to create a business case for all of this technology. But you have to kind of understand the strategy that we're doing here. And so in other words, if you're going to retool the business, it's not just automating stuff that currently goes on. It's actually building something that's unique and innovative in the market. Um, a lot of companies don't like that because it's very scary, uh, where, but if they're not innovating in the space, they're not the people to go off and, you know, um, build a, a, in the case of the automobile industry, a better transmission, better self-driving capabilities, um, then they might as well get out of the game because someone's going to step up and do it. And we're entering a componentized world where uh, the winner in those particular subsystems is going to be in most of the cars out there. And also watch the following, you know, watch following trends. And we're always talking about the shiny objects, things like that. Just have a, a devil's advocate for the argument that you could end up chasing IoT and AI and all kinds of odd directions and not necessarily understanding how it's grounded in your business and not do much good. And so you have all this great, you know, technology projects you can point to, uh, but none of them are effective because they were misappropriated. You, mi you mischose them, I guess, is the best way to put it. Yeah, absolutely. Great top tips. And thanks for being part of the C-Suite show this week, Dave. I really appreciate that. Always a pleasure. And thanks for watching, everyone. Really hope you enjoyed watching this week's show. You can get Dave on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm on Twitter, at Nelson underscore Hilliard. All the other social media links are in the description box, along with our blog links as well. So please come along and check those out. We're on iTunes and Stitcher, so go over there and also check out our podcast. Make, your, make sure that you subscribe to those as well. I really appreciate all the support we get on social media with what we do. Uh, it means a lot to us because uh, there's a lot goes into these, uh, producing these shows every week. So uh, thanks for watching, and until next week. Sweet.